Hey everybody, welcome to Game 7 in the Friends of the Community History Making Baseball Challenge between the Dead Ballers and the ID Jesters. Normally Game 7 is the final game of a series, but in this case we're playing a 9 game series. It could be the final one if the ID Jesters come out victorious. But if the Dead Ballers win and they've won two in a row, it will go to a Game 8 and we'll re we will revert back to the Dead Ballers home ballpark. So... It's going to be either game eight or it's going to be over, one or the other. Ron Juckett on the hill for the Jesters. The rear admiral, Clinton Parks, is on the hill for the Dead Ballers. Thought I'd go ahead and do the game day checks on camera so you can see them. And the first thing we do is we roll 1d6 and compare it to the winning streaks and the or the losing streak, depending on who you're doing, uh, for each team. So we're going to start with the, with the Dead Ballers since they're the visiting team. They've won two games in a row, so we're going to roll 1d6. If it's a 2 or a 1, they will be automatically uh, harmonious, completely harmonious. If it's more than 2, then we go to the Mood Finder chart. So if this is a 1 or a 2, they'll be harmonious. It is a 6, so we're going to go to the Mood Finder chart. Are the Dead Ballers ready to win tonight? Yes, they are, so they're semi-harmonious. So since they are semi-harmonious, we'll write that in on the score sheet. We will go to the sunny sunny chart, roll 1d6, and see what we're going to be checking here. A 1. So 1 says we are checking the batting coach. So let's see if we get a bump from somebody in the dead ballers on the batting coach. It's a 6, though. So 6 says no, non-issue. So when you get to 5 or 6, there's no issue. So nothing specific is going to happen. It's just simply they're semi-harmonious. Now we go to the jesters. Same deal. 1 to 2. They'll be dissonant. Three, four, five, or six, we'll go to the mood chart. And they're going to go to the mood chart. So are the ID Jesters ready to win tonight? Yes, they are. So the ID Jesters will also be semi-harmonious. And we'll once again go to the sunny side of the chart. See what we get. We get a three, and this time that is the team trainer. So we'll see if anything happens on that. Anything other than five or six, we'll get something good for them. It's a four. So the team trainer and a four says perk with... Reserve non-pitcher. Now we have to see which reserve we're talking about. So reserve non-pitcher, we roll a 1 through 6 to see who it is. It's a 3. So that's going to be reserve infielder major perk. All right, let's find out what the major perk is. 3, major perk. Hot till further notice. No, I'm sorry, it's pitcher, non-pitcher. 3, hot, to, yeah, still hot till further notice. So a reserve infielder for the ID Jesters. It's going to be hot till further notice. Let's see who the reserve infielder is going to be. And there's only two. There's ID Jester himself and there's Clock Rots. Those are the two infielders. So we're going to say that ID Jester is going to be hot till further notice. So that means that means if you know if he pinch hits and we get a check for right now, he will automatically be hot. And that's the perk he's going to have. Okay, those are out of the way important part really is they're, they're both semi-harmonious. That's the main objective. So let's look at the starting lineups. First for the dead ballers and since he did so well in the in the last game, original Grognard is going to stay in the leadoff spot and he is actually the designated hot batter. Benny P is at second. He's the designated cold batter. Mark For Forsberg is at first. Britt Boy Shaw is catching. Anthony from Bleacher, Bain, Gum, uh, Bleacher Bum Gaming is batting fifth and playing third. Combat Painter is the DH hitting sixth. Mark McClellan hits 7th in right field. Don Heston is at shortstop hitting 8th. And Jerry Ball is going to bat ninth and hit center field, play center field, sort of like a second leadoff man. For the ID Jesters, Rob! Exclamation point back in the starting lineup in his familiar leadoff spot, playing left field. D. Scott Howard is the catcher. He will bat 2nd. Derek Dodgers, Royals fan, is 3rd, hitting 3rd. And he's a designated hot batter, although they only scored one run, uh, last game, so it's kind of hard to find a hot batter, but Derek Dodgers is going to play that part. Mark Russell is carrying over a cold result from his till further notice from the previous game, so he's automatically cold. Then we got Bubba Husky uh, hitting fifth as a DH. We got J.B. Gorman hitting sixth, Keith Higdon seventh. Uh, what do I have here? Right fielder. What did I write Harry on there for? That doesn't sound right. Larry Harris. I don't know why did I put Harry on there. Sorry, Larry. I don't know how in the world I thought thought of that one. But also, I just also noticed that we need a second cold player for the gestures because 
the call from Mark Russell is from ter- till further notice, not from the previous game's results. So actually, it's going to be it's going to be Mr. Gorman. He's going to be the coal batter. So we have two coal batters and a hot batter. And like I said, the extra coal batter is coming from the results of the till further notice. All right, Ron Juckett has finished his warm-up tosses. And if you're not familiar with his card, he is pattern after 2002, Pedro Martinez. And Clinton Parks is pattern after 1965, Sandy Koufax. So usually we'll find pitching duels, but we'll see. The original Grognard steps in, and we're underway in Game 7. It's a 3-3-6. And a 3-3-6 ask, is the pitcher an ace? Yes, he is. Ron certainly is an ace. So since he's an ace, it's going to fly out the center. In fact, I'll show the result right here. 3-3-6, three, three, ace or dynamic, he's an ace, so it's a fly out to center, which is in red. So we're going to the experience chart on the next batter, Benny P. Benny P is a semi-prospect, and Ron is an icon. So definite advantage there for the Jesters. And now Benny P reverts to neutral. So we got a 3-5 on the experience chart. Says icon batter. No, he's not an icon batter. If he was, he'd single to the outfield. Otherwise, we have outfield drama. So we're checking the outfield defense for the Jesters. And it's 1-2 on the outfield drama chart. And a 1-2 says right fielder iron. Right fielder is Larry Harris. He is not iron. If he was iron, he'd misjudge the ball for safe on an error. Otherwise, it's a routine fly out. So all that to get out number two. So two up, two down. Here's Mark Forsberg, first baseman. And we get a 2-2-5 as we go back to the main chart. 2-2-5. Is he a star? No, Ron's not a star. He's an ace. Is a batter slugger or a sad sack? He is neither one. So he's going to single to center. If he's active, he steals. He's actually stoic or semi-stoic, so it's going to be a single. Forsberg is on. Two down for Brit Boy Shaw. 3-3-5 for Brick Boy Shaw. Is pitcher wild? No, he's got double control. Is he a sad sack? No, he's not a sad sack, so he's going to single. And with a lead die of three, that's a two base advancement. That puts runners on the corners. Uh, he would steal, but he's stoic, so he's going to have to hold. So runners are at the corners with two outs for Anthony from Bleacher Bum Gaming. And Ron in the shaky spot here in the first. 3-5-6, that's the left-right split. And guess what? Anthony's a switch hitter, so he's going to get that advantage, that platoon advantage, because a 3-5-6 check. Ask, are they the same? And they're not, because he's a switch hitter. He's batting the opposite of that. Is he utility or sad sack? Certainly isn't. So it's a single down the line. That's a two-base advancement. And the dead ballers take a one nothing lead here in the top of the first. Brit Boy Shaw will motor to third. So runners are at the corners again with, one out, with two outs and one run in on the RBI single by... Mr. Bleacherbum Gaming. Here's Combat Painter. Another 3-5-6, but this time Combat Painter is a right-hander, which means that he is the same as Ron, so that's a strikeout. It's the old Circle K. I always circle that to see how many left-right splits come up. That time it came with two rolls in a row, but the dead ballers take a one nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the first, and Clinton Parks is the happiest guy in the building to give that lead. Here's Rob! Exclamation point, two four four. 2-4-4. Four, four. Is he an ace? Yes, he is. It's a fly out to center. So one away. Here's D. Scott Howard. 1-2-6. Is he fresh? Yes, he's going to line to second. He's in the first inning, so he's obviously fresh. That's two quick outs. And here is Derek Dodger, Royal fan. 1-1-6. One, one, is he fresh? Yes, it's another strikeout. Not another, but it's his first. But it's another freshness check is what I meant to say. And after one inning, it is one nothing dead ballers is they are pushing to make game eight happen. Here's Mark McClelland. Four, five, six. Pitcher is blank. Is Does he have patience? No, he doesn't. He's going to fly to center, one away. That is in purple, so we're going to the chemistry chart. Both teams semi-harmonious. For Don Heston's at bat. And both teams are harmonious, one, three. Pitching team harmony, yes. The infielder makes diving stop of a hot liner for an out. It would have been a single otherwise, but it's a liner. We'll say Derek Dodgers made that stab at third base. So there's two down for Jerry Ball. Jerry Ball. 
a two, three, four. That normally talks about runners on base, but there are none, so we, there is not going to be any plate drama. Is he a hot batter? No, he's not a hot batter, so he's going to pop to third, and the inning is over. So Ron rebounds here in the second with a solid inning to work, three up, three down. Bottom of the second we go. Mark Russell steps in against Clinton Parks. 2-2-6 two, two, as he hit by the pitch. Desired Eye says he is, so Mark Russell gets plunked by a Clinton fastball. And he's not, ha not too happy about it. But he's aboard. And here's Bubba Husky, the DH. 2-4-5. Two, 2-4-5. Four, five. Two, four, five. Nothing on the pitcher. Is he a hero? No, he's not a hero. He will pop to second. One away, and we're going to the experience chart based on that. And Clinton's an icon. J.B. Gorman is a semi-prospect. So, advantage dead ballers, at least initially. Depending on what the role is. 4-5. Four, 4-5 five. Four, five says prospect batter. Yes, the side eye says he is. So he's going to strike, strike him out. So he gets J.B. Gorman out on strikes. And some blues. So we're going to right now chart. Clinton is semi-hot for that strikeout. Key taken in is neutral. 3-6. They're both neutral. 3-6. Cold pitcher. No. If he was, he would miss, uh, miss the outside corner and the batter would get a single. Otherwise, it's a pop out to the catcher. And that's... Two innings in the books with no score. I'm sorry, with the, the dead ball is leading one nothing. No score since the first inning, I should say. Now, I didn't mention it earlier, but honestly, behind the plate in this game is the semi-questionable C.B. Buckner, so he could be costing some of the pitchers some strikeouts. Adrian Johnson's at first, Mike Estabrook's at second, and Joe West, who was at home plate in the previous game, is now at third base. So I just want to get that bit of... Hiding this out of the way. We'll keep it out of the way. Here's Benny P. 135. And we're going as soon as I mention the umpires, we go right to them. The 135 with the blue means we're going to the umpires. So must have I don't know, that's kind of weird how that happened. But anyway, base is empty. We're going to the umpire chart. See if C B comes into play here. 2-2 two, two on the umpire chart. 2-2. Two, two, respected umpire at third. No, Joe West is strict, but not respected. If he was, sharp liner. Dust foul line, fair ball, batter on base with a single. Other umpires in, incorrectly rule foul. So since Joe West didn't see it, Benny P does not get that single. He's back in the box. But that's not bad, triple four. So we go to the back to the main chart for triple four. Triples are good in this game for hitters. Triple four, is he a scrapper? Yes, he is. Since he's a scrapper, it's only going to be a single. It would have been a double. But instead, it is a scrapper. And what happened to the original Grognard? That's who, that's who should have been in there, right? Because the last out was made by Jerry Ball. So I got that screwed up there. Original Grognard's the batter. He is not a scrapper, so it will be a double. So I didn't, didn't want to get that screwed up. So original Grognard continuing his hot ways with that double. Now here's Benny P. Benny P. Three, four, five. Three, four, five. Is Iron Catcher? No. Does he have a good eye? Yes, he does have a good eye. So we're going back to the umpire chart. It's a strike, but now we're going to the umpire chart with a runner at second. It's a three, six. Three, six with a runner at second. Questionable umpire at home. Yes, he is. C.B. Buckner is semi-questionable. We got a dot, so he's questionable. Three, six. Questionable umpire at home. Doesn't hear batter call timeout. Call third strike. So C.B. Buckner rings up. Benny P. Benny P. was trying to call timeout. C.B. Buckner didn't hear him or chose not to hear him. However you want to look at it. If you think it's a conspiracy, then it's a, and he gets a strikeout. So that time C.B. Buckner helped Ron Juckett. Now we move on to Mark Forsberg. One, two, four. Does he have control? Yes, he does. He's got double control. That means two consecutive ground outs to short. And that's going to end the inning. So the first ground out is going to... Keep the original Grognard at second, and the second ground out is going to end the inning. So that double, those double qualities really come into play, help out, whether it's double flash or double control. So we go to the bottom of the third, still one nothing dead ballers. Here's Keith Higdon, 2-3-3, three, three. ace or star, yes he is an ace, it's a ground out to short. Here's Larry Harris, 2-3-4. No ways on base. There's no plate drama. Is he a hot batter? Larry Harris is not a hot batter. So he's going to pop to third. 
Wait a minute, that was Larry Harris. Why did I not move these cards? Hold on. The first roll was the bat pitcher anyway, so the batter had nothing to do with it. This is Larry Harris. And he's Larry Harris was first batter. He had nothing to do with it. So TW TV ends up popping up. My bad. It was on the pitcher, so it didn't really matter. In this case, T Dove TV was not a hot batter either, so it's still gonna be a pop to third base. Sorry about that. Some of these cards, I must not be moving them at the end of the inning or something. Here's Rob exclamation point, but I'm not affecting anything on the game. Control, yes, uh, Clinton has it, so it's ground ball to short. Innings over, so through through three. Still one nothing dead ballers. And now That will bring up, make sure I'm getting these cards in the right position here. All right, some of these cards got mixed up between the dead ball. When I'm putting them to the side, somehow they're getting mixed in with each other. So let's get that bit of situation straight. So we don't want anybody batting out of the turn here. All right, let's figure out where we're going to be here. Derek Dodgers and then Mark Russell, Bubba Husky, and JB. Okay, now we're straight. Sorry about that. All right, so we do know now that Mr. Anthony, Bleacher Bum Gaming, will be leaving things off. One, five, six. Is he a whiffer? He's a semi-whiffer. The side guy says he's a whiffer, so he is out on strikes. One away for Combat Painter. One, two, five. Struggler, no. Is he patient? No. So he's going to ground out to third unless he's a whiffer. And he happens to be a whiffer because the doc made him one. So it's another strikeout. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Mr. Ron Juckett. Brings up Mark McClelland. 4-4-6. Four, 4-4-6. Four, six. Four, four, six. Is he a star? No. Is he sad sack, utility, or patient? Neither one. It's a single to right field for Mark McClelland. Active runner steals. He's double active, so he's going to steal second and third on the same at bat. So all of a sudden now he's at third base with two outs for Don Heston. It's that double active again, those double qualities coming into play. One, three, six. Is he an ace? Yes, he is. It'll be a strikeout. He's got a semi good eye, but the sire die says no, so no, he can't fend off that. It will be a strikeout. And Ron Juckett pitches around those two steals. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. And it's time for the gestures to try to do something. Here's D. Scott Howard. One, four, six, flash. Yes, Clinton has double flash. So he's going to strike out D. Scott Howard, but he will not strike out Derek Dodgers because he has a good eye. It'll simply be a ground out for him. So strike out there, and we'll call it a 6-3 ground out for the second out. And that'll bring up Mark Russell. Two, two, four. That's the pitching at home. They are not. They're on the road. Is he a slugger? He is a slugger, certainly is. It's a double to left for Mark Russell. So a two-out double, and that brings up Bubba Husky. Chance to pick up an RBI right here for Bubba. 3-3-5. Three, three, is the pitcher wild? No, he's got control. Is he a sad sack? No, he's not. That's a single to right field, and that'll bring home the run. Would be a stolen base, but if he's stoic, he holds. He is stoic, so he's going to have to hold. But more importantly, Mark Russell comes in on the RBI by Mr. Bubba Husky. So Bubba keeps it going. Two to one now. I'm oh, sorry, it's one to one tie. Here's J.B. Gorman. Three, five, six. That's a left-right split. And he's a switch hitter. He's a switch hitter. And since that's not a die, uh, the die is not a dot. He is not utility. So that hit's going to hold. And that's going to put runners on the corners because you have two base advancement with the lead die of three. So back-to-back -back singles. By Gorman and by Bubba Husky. Brings up Keith Higdon. Chance to take the lead. 1 2 4, but he has control, so it'll be a ground out to the shortstop to end the inning. But we're tied at 1 thanks to the RBI single by Bubba Husky. And we go to the fifth now. Jerry Ball to lead it off. 1 3 5, from, and a black 1 means you're going to the ballpark. And Veteran Stadium plays semi-small to both righties and lefties. Let's see what Jerry can do. He is a semi-scrapper. 
So it's a neutral ballpark. One three on the neutral ballpark. So let's check the ballpark chart. One three, small ballpark. No, it's neutral. Foul ball into first base bleachers, batter still at bat. Otherwise, first base makes a catch on a towering foul ball out. So since it's not a small ballpark, it did not get in the stands. It stayed in play for the first baseman. So Jerry Ball fouls out to Mark Russell for one away. Back to the top of the order in original Grognard. 244. And 244 asks, is Pitcher Nace? Yes, he is. To fly to center. So two down. And that brings up Benny P. 466. The pitcher have control. Yes, he does. He's got double control, which means he gives up. And this is the downside. He's gonna, it says if you've got control, you give up a single. Pitch red, single. Well, in this case, double control means double single. So not only will Benny P single, but Mark Forsberg will single to send Benny P to third. So runners are at the corners now with two outs for Britt Boy Shaw. Big showdown here between Britt Boy Shaw and Ron Juckett. Three, four, six. Blank for the pitcher. Is he eager? Britt Boy is semi patient, so he's going to walk. So that's going to load the bases. Bases are loaded and we're going to the chemistry chart because that walk is in purple. It says active steel, but he has nowhere to go. Plus he stole it. But it is in purple, so we are going to the chemistry chart. Anthony Bleacher Bum Gaming. Huge at bat here against Ron on the chemistry chart. And we're both neutral. 1-4. Neutral. 1-4. Batting team dissonance. No, they're not dissonant. If they were, it'd be a dribble to the pitcher. Otherwise, it's a single. And with a one base advancement and a lead die of one, with two outs, I think you get two bases here. Yep, two outs, any runner scores from second. So it's a two run single for Anthony. So that's going to score Benny P and Mark Forsberg. It is now three to one. Britt Boy Shaw will move to third. And with all those hits now, Ron Juckett has now become a struggler. Um, until he gets another out. So with two outs, runners at the corners. It's a 3-1 to one lead for the dead ballers. And here's Combat Painter. 2-4-4. Two, 2-4-4. Four, four. Two, four, four. Is he an ace? Well, he would have been, but he's now he's a struggler, so he lost that. Is he a champion? Combat Painter's not a champion, so he will ground to short. Unless he's a whiffer, he's a semi-whiffer. The side guy says he's a whiffer. So it is a strikeout to end the inning. But two runs come across for the dead ballers. And they now lead it 3-1. to one. Clinton Park's very happy about that. Here's Larry Harris. 1-3-6 is an ace. You better believe he's an ace. And that means it's a strikeout. Doesn't have the good eye, so it will be a strikeout. Here now is T-Dub TV. 2-4-5 for T-Dub. Blank for the pitcher. Is he a hero? No, he's not. He will pop to second for out number two, and that's in red. So we're going to the experience chart. Neutral for Rob, and Clinton is an icon. So Clinton against Rob. And it's a 66. How about that? On the experience chart, it says, there's the pitch, a drive to center, fence. So Rob is a semi-slugger on the fence check. We'll see if he can get that slugger result. He does not. He's neutral. But still, either way, still going to be a good hit. Since he's neutral on the fence check, it's a double. If he'd have been a slugger, it'd still been a double. So with that low number of two, it's just going to be a double. But it's a two-out double. So that gives a chance to D. Scott Howard to try to bring that run home. Two, four, five. And two, four, five, ask. It's blank for the pitcher. Ask, is he a hero? He is not a hero. So he's going to pop to second, and the inning is over. We go to the sixth. Ron will now get his ace back since he got that out. He's no longer a struggler. He's broken that string of consecutive base runners, so he's back to being an ace. It is the last inning of semi freshness for both pitchers. Four, five, six. Length for the pitcher. Is he patient? No, he's going to fly to center. And we're going to the chemistry chart since that was in purple. Here's Don Heston. Both teams are neutral again. 
Pitching team dissonance. Nope. If they were dissonant, lack of hustle would cause the ball to drop in for a single, but it's a fly out to right instead. So Larry Harris was alerting on the ball to make that catch. Two down. That's gonna speaking of ball, here's Jerry Ball. One three five, and that is the unusual play. So we're going right back to Veteran Stadium, and I believe Jerry Ball was the one who hit was hit the hitter last time we did that. So it's deja vu all over again, as Yogi would say. Back on Veteran Stadium, semi small. And this time it is small. One five. One five says big ballpark. Right fielder unable to run down ball for a double. Active runner stretches to a triple. Other ballparks, it's a fly out. So it's a good thing it wasn't a big ballpark because Jerry Ball would have gotten a triple out of that. But instead, Larry Harris was able to run it down. Didn't have as much room to cover. And he was able to make the play. So Ron gets through six innings. Still a quality start, although I'm sure not as good as he would like. But six, six innings and three runs does technically mean a quality start. And here's Clinton Parks. He'll be facing Derek Dodgers, a Royals fan. 4-4-5. Four, four, Workman, no. Is he patient? He is pa He's semi-patient. The side right says he's patient. So it'll be a walk. Lead-off walk to Derek Dodgers. And now, the man who had the RBI double his last time up, Mark Russell, has a chance to make something happen here. 2-2-6. Two, two, he is not hit by the pitch. Is he the cleanup batter? He certainly is the cleanup batter. That's a home run to right field, and here it is, folks, right here on the book. 2-2-6, two, two, batter hit by pitch. You need, you need the desired eye. That was a blank. Next one right over, cleanup batter, home run to right field. So Mark Russell, opposite field. And you know who the hot batter is for the Jesters in this game. Even though it says he's cold to further notice, he's, he's not letting that bother him. A two-run bomb off Clinton Parks. And he's getting payback because Clinton hit him to start the second inning. He's come back and doubled and homered off of Clinton. That's the best way to do it. Paid the pitcher back by nailing him, literally, with hits. So we are tied at three, and we got a brand new ball game. And Ron Juckett is now off the hook for any kind of loss. In fact, he could qualify for a win if the Jesters get another run this inning. Here's Bubba Husky. 2-2-3. Two, two, Wild no. Is he slugger or utility? Neither one. He's going to single. He's not active, so he won't steal, but he will single. So Bubba Husky keeps up the hot bat. Here's J.B. Gorman. 2-5-6. Is he a struggler? He is a semi-struggler because he's allowed three consecutive base runners. The decider says he's a struggler. So therefore, it's a single past third base. Lead dive two only gets one base, though, but it will be a single. And now Clinton is a full struggler. For now allowing four consecutive base runners. And the bullpen for the dead ballers is loosing Bobby Catalano. Loosing as fast as she can. Here's Keith Higdon. Clinton is now a full struggler. 3-4-6. 3-4-6. Blank for the pitcher. Is he eager? He is semi-eager. Decider says he's eager, so he flies to center. And the runner's going to have to hold. Two down. Well, actually, I'm sorry. One away. That was the first out. One down, and now Clinton reverts back to being an ace because he finally got that out and breaks that string. So he's back to being an ace. Here's Larry Harris. One, four, five. Struggler, no. It's a good thing. See, if, if he was still a struggler, it'd been a wild pitch. Otherwise, it's a ground ball to the third baseman, which turns into a five, four, three double play to end the inning. So Clinton quickly gets out of that. But Damage done. Two runs are in, and after six complete, we are tied at three here at the vet. And now both pitchers are out of freshness, and I believe both pitchers are going to go ahead and come out of the ball game. So it's going to be a battle of the bullpens going forward. As both Ron and Clinton have been lifted. So the ID gestures need to turn to their bullpen, and they're going to turn to tabletop. No, I'm sorry. They're going to turn to where'd he go? They're going to turn to hammer time. So we're going to have hammer time. Hammer time is in. Oops, wrong spot. He needs to be in the home position here. Hammer time and Bobby Catalano will be the new pitcher for the dead ballers in the bottom half of the inning. Taking over for Clinton Parks. So Bobby Catalano will be the new pitcher for the dead ballers. All right, so right now it is going to be hammer time. 
It is hammer time here in the top of the seventh. He'll be facing top of the order, original Grognard, to lead things off against hammer time. Two, four, six. Control. Does hammer time have control? He's got semi control. Decided I gives it to him. So it's a ground out back to the pitcher. And finally, somebody retires the leadoff batter. All right, here's Benny P. One, three, four. Gold catcher. Yes, D. Scott Howard is semi-gold. The side die says he's gold, so it is a strikeout. But Benny has a good eye, so it won't be a strikeout. It'll simply be a ground out for out number two. I'll bring up Mark Forsberg. One, four, six. Does he have flash? He does have flash. It's a strikeout. Forsberg does not have the good eye, so it will be a strikeout. And hammer time pitches a scoreless top of the seventh. So now... Bobby Catalano coming in to pitch the bottom of the seventh in relief of Clinton Parks, and he'll be, she'll be facing T Dub TV. So T Dub 445. Workman. She's not a workman, she's a star. Is he patient? T Dub is patient, so he will draw a leadoff walk for T Dub TV. And that'll bring up Rob! Exclamation point. And Rob's going to drop down a bunt. They're going to play a little... They're going to throw it right back to the dead ballers and play a little dead ball action. And a four. Anything other than a six is a good bunt, and that's a good bunt. So it's a sacrifice hit. We'll say three unassisted. And T-Dub will move into scoring position with one out for D. Scott Howard and for Derek Dodgers Royals fan. So here comes D. Scott. Four, five, six. Is he patient? Yes, he is. He's semi-patient. The I said he's patient. And Bobby, a little wild... She's already semi-wild, and she's had two walks already. So, puts two on with one out for Derek Dodgers, Royals fan. One, two, two. Is she a workman? No, she's not. Is Derek a champion or a whiffer? He is a champion. Since he's a champion, he's a nub an infield single to third base. There it is, folks. One, two, two. Champion or whiffer. Nubbed infield single to third base. So, the bases are loaded with one out. And Mark Russell coming to the plate who hit that big home run last time. We may see a new pitcher because the dead ballers want that ace quality. So Bobby just didn't have it tonight for the dead ballers. And I know he's the closer, but they may, they, they may not have any choice. They're going to bring in Dave Little. They, they want to nip this in the bud as best they can. So Dave Little is going to come in. He does get the ace quality, which makes him now an ace and a half, which means if we get the desired eye, he'll be a double ace. He's got double flash as well, so they may need that strikeout some, you know, to help him out here. Base is loaded, one out. Mark Russell, 3-3-6. Three, three, is he an ace? Yes, he is. He, he would not have been an ace because the thing's a, not a dot, but coming in mid-inning, he gets that ace perk. So it is a fly out to center, which is still going to score the run as a sacrifice fly. So, But it does prevent a hit, but it does put the Jesters in the lead. Now four to three, a key sacrifice fly by Mark Russell. And that's in red, so we're going to the experience chart for the next at bat. Bubba Husky is a semi-icon, and Dave Little is neutral. So Bubba is an icon on the experience chart. We get a 1-1. One, one. Look at that, 1-1. One, one. Prospect pitcher. No, he's not a prospect pitcher. He was. He would be fooled. It'd be a poorly chosen pitch, and the, in, the outfielder would drive it, to, or the batter would drive it into right field for a fence. Otherwise, it's a strikeout. So, since he's not a prospect pitcher, he strikes out Bubba Husky to end the inning. So, when you think about it, bases loaded, only one out, give it the one run is not totally the worst thing in the world. Uh, kind of hard to prevent any runs at all when a sack fly can do the trick. And that's what happened off the bat of Mark Russell, who's done it again. He's doubled. Homer and now hit a key sacrifice fly. He got ticked off apparently when he got hit by the pitch by Clinton. So Clinton may have created a monster out there. All right, so Hammer Time now can qualify for the win if the bullpen can hold it. So we go to the eighth inning, and we'll see who's going to come in in the eighth inning. And it's going to be Moni G. So Moni G is going to come on, and she will be facing Brick Boy Shaw. Bleacher Bone Gaming Anthony and Combat Painter. She's a right-hander. She does have flash with semi-control. 
First batter is Brit Boy Shaw. 235. Wild. No, she's not wild. Is Brit Boy Shaw eager? No, he's not. So he's going to ground out to second, but if he's patient, he's going to walk. He is semi patient. Decided I says he's patient, so that's a walk. And I'll show that as well. It would have been a ground out to second on that 235 result, but the little hourglass here, and if you flip over to this part of the book, an hourglass says patient draws a walk. So there you go. So that brings the tie and run to the plate here in the eighth. Now Anthony might be looking to bunt. So let's see if they're going to try to fight fire with fire. And Anthony actually gets a base, a bunt single. That When you get a one, I'll show it in the on the chart. When you do the bunts, attempted bunt, a one is safe at first. Runners advance. So we're going to roll the sire die for ruling either a single or an error. So we'll roll the sire die. If it's a dot, it's going to be a single. If it's blank, it's an error. So it's an error on somebody. And I'm going to say the error is on the first baseman. So it's E3. This going to allow the runner to get on base. And he was trying to give himself up, but it ends up putting runners at first and second. And now Combat Painter is up, and he's definitely in a bunt situation. So we're going to go back and do it again. Two, so it's a good hit, good uh, good bunt rather. Sacrifice hit. We'll say two to three, and that'll move the runners up into scoring position, second and third, with only one out for Mark McClelland. And we're going to the bullpen for the Jesters. They need an ace quality, and they also need a lefty, so they're going to Tony Spicky Alley. Tony Spicky Alley will be coming on. They want that lefty in there. To face the lefty Mark McClelland as the gears are turning here. So Spicky Alley will be coming in. Runners are at second and third with two with I'm sorry with only one out. And Mark McClelland the batter. Look at the bench for the dead ballers. They could bring in a right-hander Robbie Wartburg to bat for Mark McClelland. And I think they will. So Mark McClelland is going to be lifted. And Robbie Wartburg is going to try to take it matters into his own hands by pinch hitting. And he'll stay in the game to play right field as well. So, 4-3 to three lead. The infield is going to have to come in. They don't have any choice. they got to cut that run off. Tony will be an ace, though, because he's coming in mid-inning. 1-2-3, flash and fresh. He's semi-flash. That gives him flash. He is fresh, so that's a strikeout and a big one. So he strikes out Mark, He strikes out Robbie Wartburg in a pinch hitting performance. So now there's two down. Infield can go back to normal for Don Heston. 2-3-3. Three, three. Ace or star. He is a semi-star. Desired Eye says he's a star. It's a ground out to short and the inning is over. So Tony Spicchiali. Incredible job in relief. To keep the ID Jesters in the lead 4-3. And now Dave Little will be semi-fresh, facing J.B. Gorman to start the bottom of the eighth. Trying to keep the score where it is. 1-5-5. Five, five. Is he a home run king? No, he's a semi-slugger, but not a home run king. So he will fly to center, one away. And that'll bring up Keith Higdon. 3-3-5. Three, three, is he wild? He is semi-wild, but the sired eye says no. Is he a sad sack? No, he's not. It's going to single to right, and he's going to steal second. So Keith Higdon with a one-out single, and he's going to steal second base. And that's what it says here on that 3-3-5. Three, three, single, stolen base. If you're not stoic, you steal a base. He's neutral. He's not stoic. So he did steal the base. And that brings up Larry Harris. 2-3-5. Is the pitcher wild? Yes, he is. This time he is. The sire die says he is, so that's a walk. And that'll put two on with one out for T Dub TV. Two, five, six. Is he a struggler? No. Champion or patient? He is patient. It's another walk. So the bases are loaded. Dave Little has walked. The bases loaded. And that's going to be it for Dave Little. He's going to have to come out. So with Rob exclamation point coming up, they want to, the dead ballers want an ace in there. So, or somebody can get the, the ace quality. So we're going to go to Tabletop Earl. He's already a star, but uh, he will now 
And I think I messed up his card. I believe he's the one with the E and Tenacious is the one without the E. I think I got those backwards. Sorry about that. But Rob now is up with bases loaded, one out in a big spot. And Tabletop will be an ace this at bat. 3-3-4. Three, three, ace or star? Yes, he is. It's a pop out to first, so the runners have to hold. He got Rob to pop up into a infield fly roll. And there's two away for D. Scott Howard. He could use one. He's 0 for 3. 5 5 6. Is the pitcher an ace? No, he's not. Is the batter a sad sack? No, he's not. It's a double to right field, so that 5 5 6 is a double to right field, and that's going to clear the bases. So those inherited runners will all score on that double. With the lead I have 5, you, get, you clear the bases. And that is now a 4 run lead. For the ID Jesters, and it looks like the beginning of the end for the Dead Ballers. Here's Derek Dodgers, a Royals fan. One, two, four, control. No, nope, he does not have control. He's got semi, but the desire die is not a dot. Is he eager? No, he's actually semi patient, so he's going to walk. Let's quit runners at first and second. Forward, Mark Russell, who's been just as hot as you can be. And we're getting a new pitcher. They want another ace to come in or somebody to have an ace quality. Uh, let's see if they're going to turn to now. It looks like they're going to go to RNGID. I'm sorry, it's going to, they're going to go to, uh, yeah, RND. Can't say it right. RNGIDP. Try to get out of this. Try to slow down Mr. Russell. 335. Is he wild? No. Is the batter a sad sack? No, he's not. It's a single to right field, so continuing his hot way is Mark Russell. That lead die of three is going to bring home a run because it's a two-base advancement. And that's now a four-run inning, which now makes it eight to three. And talking about blowing the game wide open. And add insult to injury. If he's not stoic, he steals. He's semi-stoic, but the sire die was a blank, so... Had insult to injury, Mark Russell is actually going to steal a base. He's really paying him back for, I mean, Clinton Parks just really created a monster by hitting him in the first inning, or second inning. Here's Bubba Husky. 1-5-5. Oh. Five, five. Is he a home run king? Bubba Husky is a semi-home run king. Desire dies a dot. There it is. 1-5-5, five, five, home run king. Home run to center. And this is getting, this is getting just out of hand. A big three-run shot. Three run shot. And now how many runs is that? One, two, three, four, seven runs, if I'm counting that correctly. Yep, they've hit all nine men have come to the plate. They batted around. Seven runs have come in. So they've batted all around. Now they need to uh, go back to J.B. Gorman, who let off the inning by flying to center field. One, three, six. He's certainly not an ace. Whiffer or cold? He is a semi-whiffer, but the sire die says no. So we've got infield drama. I'm not sure how much drama you can have with a score like this, but we'll play it out. 2-5 on the infield drama. A 2-5. Second baseman, Iron. Second baseman is Benny P. He's actually semi-gold, so he's not Iron. So it won't be a single. It'll be an out, and the inning's finally over. And a 7 spot coming in for the ID Jesters, and they now lead it by the score of 11-3. to And... With the lead that safe, you, you think you can bring it just about anybody you want to. And so, the ID Jesters figure it's safe to bring this guy into the game because he can't blow it that bad. So, trying to close it out. And he hasn't pitched in a couple games, so he's well rested. Jerry Ball is the leadoff hitter. Oops. A little spot here. All right, Jerry Ball leading things off. Three, four, six. Three, four, six. Blank for the pitcher. Is he eager? He is not. He's going to walk and he's going to steal. So it's a single, I mean, I'm sorry, a walk and a stolen base for Jerry. Brings up Larry. I'm sorry, brings up, uh, I'm in the wrong spot down here. I'm supposed to be up top. Not bad. 
rolling base. The score sheet's a mess. Here's Grog, original Grognard. That was in purple, so we're going to the chemistry chart. Both teams, again, semi-harmonious, although you wouldn't think the dead balls were harmonious. 2-4, batting team harmony. No, they're neutral. So instead of blooping for a single, got an outfield drama. So we got outfield drama coming up. 2-4. Two, 2-4 four. Two, four for outfield drama. 2-4, outfield drama. Center fielder gold. Center fielder J.B. Gorman is gold, so he will make the catch. Fly out to center, one away. And that's also in purple, so we're going to the chemistry chart again for Benny P. This time both teams are harmonious, and we get a 1-4. One, 1-4, four. One, four, batting team distance. Nope, it's going to be a single. So with a lead die of 1, that's a 1 base advancement. Puts runners on the corners for Mark Forsberg. 2-5-5. Two, 2-5-5. Five, five. Two, five, five. Is he a star? No. It's batter home run king. No, he's not a home run king. He will fly to left. And I don't think you get a sack fly on that. Active runner would score on sack fly. Jerry does come in, actually, because he's active runner. So it is a sacrifice fly. So it does cut the lead to 11 to 4. Now there are two outs for Brit Boy Shaw. 1, 2, 3, flash and fresh. He's definitely fresh. Doesn't have, he doesn't have flash, though, but so it's going to be a ground to short. But the ball game is over. And the series is over. The ID Jesters win it by the final score of 11 to 4 and win the series five games to two. So hopefully you all enjoyed that whole series. And I had fun doing it. And maybe we'll do it again sometime. But for right now, it's the ID Jesters celebration.